this is the network for Acme Incorporated, and sales and engineering have had a bit of a difference of opinion, and they want to keep all their routes completely separate from each other. Now here's the problem. They both share a common router. So sales R1 and sales R2, they go through the common router in the middle, and engineering R3 and engineering R4 also go through that router in the middle. What do we do? Well, we can carve up and create two separate routing tables for the common router. They call them VRFs. So we can create a virtual routing and forwarding instance, a VRF, for sales and we can just call it sales. And we can create a VRF, I'll do it in a different color. Uh, let's do one for engineering. We'll create a VRF and I'll give them green. We can create a VRF for engineering. We can just call it ENG. And then what we'll do is this, we'll take on the common router, we'll go ahead and we'll take these two interfaces and we'll assign them to that VRF. We'll do the same thing for sales. We'll take this, the two interfaces that they are participating with and we'll assign them to the VRF called sales. Now, any time that routes come in or out or we share or forward packets, this router, the common router, is like running VMware. Think of VRFs like VMware for a routing table. You have the global routing table, the common router does, but specifically it has routes inside of a separate routing table for sales for these two interfaces and a separate interface for engineering in these two interfaces. If you want to pause, jot this down, we are going to take this existing network right here, carve it up into VRFs and walk you through. Oh, one more thing. Let's talk about routing protocols. The routing protocols that we're using in sales is, let's do RIP. So let's say that we're running RIP all the way across here. So this is a RIP domain. And let's say that engineering is using, let's say they're using a EIGRP right down here. So we're going to have separate VRFs, separate routing domains. Let's start to configure this right now. So here we're at the common or the core router. Let's just do a show IP route and just verify that we have all the routes. We have the 111, which is from R1. We have 222, which is from R2. We have 333, which is from our good friends at engineering. And then we have 444. So, and we'll do a show IP interface brief just to verify that our interfaces as are as they we thought they were. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and create a couple of VRFs, one for engineering, one for sales, and then we'll go ahead and assign these interfaces to those respective VRFs. So let's go ahead and take care of interface FA, or let's create the VRFs. So IP VRF, and we see we're going to call them sales. They are case sensitive, and we're going to create one called IP VRF for engineering. Poof, now we have two VRFs. Do show IP VRF. Now they exist, they have no interfaces yet, and so we'll go ahead and we'll assign them the appropriate interfaces. So if we go into interface config for FA0 slash 0, and say IP VRF forwarding for, that would be sales. Now that interface belongs to sales. I need to reassign an IP address, because it takes it off when you do that. So now this IP address and this interface both belong to the sales virtual routing and forwarding table. We're going to go into interface FA0 slash 1 and do the exact same thing. IP forwarding sales and give it an IP address. This would be 20. Now check this out. If we do a, um, a show IP VRF like this, now you'll notice that sales has FA00 and I meant to assign it FA01 as well. I totally missed that. And I gave it the wrong IP address too, so I need to go fix both those things. So I was trying to save a second. Let's go to FA00. It needs the IP address of, of uh, needs the forwarding for sales. It needs the IP address of this guy right there. All right. And we'll do the same thing, but we'll do it for FA0 slash 1. Put him into sales. Give him the correct address. Of That is the correct address. Good. So now if we do a show IP VRF. We should have the two interfaces that are both in sales. So now those two interfaces belong to sales. Let's go into the other two interfaces and assign them to engineering. So interface FA1 slash 0, 
and we'll specify IP VRF forwarding and that would be ENG. We'll give it its IP address back. IP address is 30.0.0.5 and we'll go in interface FA2 slash 0 and assign that also to the correct VRF and give it its IP address back. All right, now check this out. If we do a show IP VRF, these interfaces, engineering now owns these two and sales owns the other two. If we did a show IP route, we have no interfaces anymore. There's no routes in the global routing table because all of the interfaces have been assigned to one or the other VRFs. If we do a show IP route for VRF sales, we should have two directly connected network and we do a show IP route for VRF ENG, we should have another two networks there. Now, our next task is to set up routing protocols that are VRF specific. Here's how it'll work. For sales, we're running RIP. So we're gonna set up RIP and associate it with the VRF called sales. It's done like this. Config T and router RIP. And we're gonna say address family, IPv4, VRF, and we're gonna say sales. This is like a little sub compartment just for RIP. And we'll simply say network, I'm gonna say everything. I'm gonna say no auto summary. You could add normal network statements there. And I'm gonna say version two. And now I've just set up IP RIP for the address family of sales. It's gonna participate with those two specific interfaces, sending and receiving updates. Now for EIGRP, let's go there. Router EIGRP1 and we need to go to address family for IPv4 VRF called engineering and we need to go ahead and say network I'm going to say network everything there it's only going to pick up the networks the interfaces assigned to that VRF so we're pretty safe so everything in that VRF and we'll say no auto summary and then we'll also do um, uh, autonomous system number and we'll say I think we're using one so you have to put the autonomous system number inside the address family because you might be using EIGRP with several different families, several different um, VRFs, and each one is going to have to specify the autonomous system number that you're using. Even though we already got a neighbor up with 30003, I'm expecting uh, 40004 as well. We'll see if he doesn't come up. If not, we'll find out why. So now if we do a show IP route for uh, VRF sales, You'll notice that we have the RIP learned routes, the one and the two network, and that's it. Our directly connected networks and the one, the two network learn from sales. I think we're missing IP edge. I think we're missing a neighbor though. <laughs> and show IP EIGRP VRF uh, ENG neighbors. Yeah, I'm missing I'm missing um, R4 as a neighbor. I'm not sure why he's not coming up. Let's fix that. Let's go over to R4 and let's do a show IP protocols. EIGRP is running for him. Ping 40.0.0.5. We have layer three. We don't have layer three connectivity. Okay, so let's see why. Show IP interface brief. And it's up. 40.0.0.4 is up. Let's go verify our IP address on the common router. And sure enough, I've got the wrong IP address on that common router. So we'll mix in troubleshooting with this lablet as well. Interface FA2 slash 0 IP address 40.0.0.5. And now we should get that neighbor up. There she is. Okay, so we do a show IP route for VRF engineering. We are going to have just the two routes for, from learn from R3 and R4 and our directly connected network. And check this out, show, show IP route. There is nothing in the global routing table. And that, my friends, is a brief overview of setting up two separate virtual routing and forwarding tables. Thanks, everybody.